in life and over a period of time is really a function of the many small decisions that we make or others make on our behalf. The interesting thing is being a math student, the biggest problem to me was there was no right answer. In maths, there's always a right answer. One plus two is equal to three. Three plus five is equal to eight. But in taking decisions in life, there's never the right answer. And you don't know until you take these decisions whether they are right or wrong. And as a result, what becomes very important is how you take those decisions, what direction they take you in, whether it's your career, whether it's, you know, who you choose as your life partner, who to ask out, etc., etc., etc. All of us every day are taking a lot of decisions. And I think this presentation is... I'm not a social scientist, so I don't have an insight into how all the people take decisions. But this is a small insight into how some of the decisions we took landed us where we are and uh, will hopefully take us on the path we are going. And it's important to all of us. You know, it may seem like I'm making this presentation because I run a company, but it's very, very important to all of us because all of us are taking decisions every day. And decisions make a lot of difference. So, you know, if someone was pointing an analogy to me that if you start from Europe and your path is three degrees different from where you were going, you will end up in Brazil instead of USA. That's, that's how important taking the right path is to all of us. The first thing which you know we realized very early on, and this is by looking back at my own life, is it's very important to always choose opportunity over security. When I was growing up myself, you know, most of my friends whose parents were business people, they were taught from day one in, uh, by their parents that, hey, guys, do what you want to, study whatever you want to, eventually you have to handle our business. This is where my parents made a big difference in my life. They always told me, uh, my friend, your, our own business is the last, last, last. If you, if you are unable to do anything in life, then maybe come back and we'll let you handle our business. But you really have to choose for yourself. And that's how, you know, instead of pushing me to settle down and run their business, they pushed me always to do and find what I wanted to do, which is why I know as parents it's very hard to send their student or send their kids to hostels at an early age, which is why they pushed me out to DPS. Which is why when, you know, I, after IIT Delhi, I got a job in the U.S. Uh, where most people in my town, I think the, there were only two people who've ever gone to IIT from the town where I belong, and almost no one had ever gone to the U.S. with a dollar salary. When I told my parents that, hey, I, I want to give that up and start a business with, you know, like a pretty weak business plan and no funding, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they were extremely supportive because they said, Choose what you want because even if you fail, we know that you would have made your own choices and you'll never regret that the choices that you made. So it, to me, you know, whenever we, as a person or as a company, whenever we are making decisions, we always keep this in mind. It's always easy, it's always safe to, you know, go on the beaten path because you know what to predict. But true success only comes when you go after something that has never been done and when you choose opportunities over security. Next thing, and this is, this is a place where I see, especially in India, a lot of us go wrong, is we tend to overanalyze. Always, always, always. The moment you want to take a decision, you start overthinking of all the things on the planet that can go wrong. I don't, I don't know how many people here have done bungee jumping ever. I have, so. One of, one of the tricks that they follow in bungee jumping, uh, and I've seen this three, four times because I went there three, four times. The moment you get to the ledge, they don't let you think. They say, one, two, three, go. Because they know the moment you look down, you'll just never jump. It's so scary because the moment you start looking down, your brain knows that hundreds of thousands of people have done this before. No one has ever died. But still, your brain will convince you that something will go wrong. And it's very important to not let your brain convince, that, convince you like that. Many people ask me, uh, how is it to start a company? And I tell them many times that, you know, starting a company is very similar to asking a girl out. If you overthink, you'll never do it. <laughs> you, got, you got to do it in the first five seconds. <laughs> 
make up your mind and just jump into it. Don't overthink because your brain will convince you to do otherwise. This is a photo of me, by the way, uh, long, long back. <clears throat> but that's another very important thing to keep in mind, that once we've decided, it's very important for us to stick with our decisions. Nothing happens on day one. Things go wrong all the time in any decision you make. And I've seen this mostly, you know, I don't know how many people have, here have ever tried to lose weight. <laughs> many people. <laughs> One of the things I've seen with people who try to lose weight, including my, I used to weigh 100, 107 kgs, by the way, in, all, all through till college. One of the things that I've seen with people who try to lose weight is somehow they will start trying to lose weight, they'll start a new exercise regime or they'll start a new diet plan. And 10 days later, they'll be extremely frustrated because their weight is not going down. And they'll look at the scale every day and they'll, you know, I'm trying so hard, it's been 10 days, it's been 15 days, it's been 30 days, my weight is not going down. The problem is, you are not overweight because you ate too much last week. You're overweight because you've been doing this for many, many years. It's not gonna go away in 30 days, or seven days, or 10 days. You gotta stick with it. And most of the times, things go wrong the first time. It doesn't work, even when we started the company. The first, I, I don't know how many people know, but the first idea we as people started with was of a coupon booklet. We used to get all these coupons from, uh, from retailers, print them into a booklet, wanted to sell the booklet to end consumers. We were, because we were entrepreneurs and we were very hopeful that this is the billion dollar idea, we printed 50,000 copies of the booklet. We sold seven in, <laughs> in the first 10 days. It, it just, you know, it's very important for us to stick to our decisions. Results almost always follow the right actions. What is very important for us to do is that once we've made a decision, let's stick to it. Let's keep doing the right thing. Even, you know, why I put this picture up is because I, this is a picture of me running a half marathon about three years back. Why, this, why, I, why I put this picture is because I also kept trying to lose weight all my life. And... Finally, I think the realization dawned on me is that let me stop worrying about how much weight I've reduced. Is eating right good for my health? Yes. Is exercising every day good for my health? Yes. So let me keep doing it without worrying, worrying about whether it's reducing, not reducing by half kg, one kg, two kg. And when I internalize that into a lifestyle, over a three to six month period, my weight started going down. And then I lost about 27 kgs in a matter of a year and a half. So just, I think a very important realization for me was just, it's extremely important for us to stick to our decisions. Next thing is to not leave any regrets in giving it everything that we got, everything. My father always used to tell me since I was a child that, son, don't worry about results, worry about only one thing. Have you given it the best you can? And that's a very, uh, very tricky statement to make. The best you can is so subjective. Like, where do you stop? Because the best you can can always be better than what you've already done. And you keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, till the time you've just completely exhausted yourself. We, you know, and we, many people see, you know, that hey, these guys started a company, it became so large, it's so successful, etc., etc., etc. But what people don't see is the pain and the blood and the sweat that went into creating that. There was a point in 2009, by the way, you know, when we started our business, both Kunal used to work in the US, I had a, a US visa and a US job offer, which was, I don't know, 60,000, 80,000 US dollars a year, which for a 23 year old is not too bad. Both of us started our business, our first office was a basement of a house in Kirti Nagar furniture market where the rent was 17,000 rupees. And when my parents visited that place for the first time, they were amazed. They almost started crying because they were hoping for their son to go to the US and earn dollars. Here their son is sitting in the basement of a Kirti Nagar house uh, paying 15,000 rupees in rent. And after we started the business, for the first three years, nothing worked, nothing at all. We put in all our savings, 
all the money that we could borrow from our parents into the business. And in 2009, we got to a point where we had only 23,000 rupees left in the company's bank account and we had to pay 5 lakh rupees of salaries the next day. That was a point of decision for us. We could have said that, hey, both of us are well, very well educated. Kunal went to Wharton, I went to IIT. Both of us, you know, we knew that we'll not die poor or hungry. We'll hopefully get a job somewhere. We could have just said that, hey, this is just too hard. Let's just give it up. Or we just, next day we realized that both of us put together had five, five lakh fifty thousand in our personal bank accounts left. That was the moment of truth for us where we said, you know, if we've come this far, let's just go all in. We cut personal checks to all our employees and, you know, I think by the end of it, we were left with 50,000 rupees. But what we know, knew was that 10 years later, even if it did, doesn't work out, we'll not carry a regret in our mind that, hey, we could have done that and saved the company. Thankfully, post that, a month later, we raised our Series A of $2 million and over a period of time, things started moving fast. And the last thing, which is also extremely important, is to dispassionately keep evolving yourself. Uh, you know, how many people know Andy Grove or have, have heard the name? He was the CEO of Intel for many, many years. For those who don't know, Intel earlier used to be a company that used to make only memory cards and RAMs. It was far later that they started into the business of making microprocessors. Andy Grove had a very famous saying. He wrote this book, which is, you know, which is pretty fantastic. I think everyone, everyone should read it. Uh, only the paranoid survive. He made a very interesting statement that every few months, all of us senior managers used to get into a room and look at our company strategy and say, uh, do a very interesting exercise that, hey, look, wish all of us got fired one day and a completely new management was to come and run our company. What are the decisions they would take? And many times they'll be very different from what we would take because we would be too attached to the decisions that we've already made and too passionate to let go of some things which, may, which we may have done, which may no longer be relevant, uh, which will not be giving up. Similar to you know, many of the telephone companies, many of the uh, camera companies uh, who just were not willing to accept the fact that there are digital cameras now. People don't want to use roles anymore. We had a similar challenge in our company back in 2011 end. Uh, we used to run a coupons business, which was extremely successful. We had 70% market share. We had raised $40 million already. Our company was valued at $200 million. Everyone was super excited that, hey, guys, you guys are doing a fantastic job. Stay at it. Keep growing. But for some reason, we were realizing that even though we are very successful at the business that we are building and we have dominant market share at 70%, uh, the market in which we are playing is very small. Even if we put in all our energy and everything into it, even then, 10 years later, we don't think it will be a large business because, and we'll not be able to provide the right return for either our employees or shareholders because the space is not large enough. And even though we worked very hard over the last two, three years to build this business. Just over the next 10 years, it's not going to be large enough. And that's when we realized that if we start a product marketplace, which is what we realized from our visit to China, it's a much larger space and we can keep building a very large business over a period of time. It was a very hard decision. We came back from there and we shut down a business which we had 70% market share in just because we thought it doesn't have a future for the next 10 years. And it's very important, time and again, we keep telling ourselves as a company, we need to keep reinventing ourselves because if we don't, someone else will reinvent and run over us. So it's very important for us to be very dispassionate in destroying our own decisions if, they, if we think they are no, no longer relevant for today's time. So this is a short summary of what I've learned in terms of making decisions in my own life. Always choose opportunity over security. Do not overthink. I'll, I'll repeat, this is very important. Stick with your decisions. Leave no regrets in giving it everything that you have. And every time and again, dispassionately evolve yourself and reassess your own decisions. So uh, I hope this is helpful for all of the people here uh, who want to take decisions. Thank you.